Hey everybody, um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, <clears throat> it's about four o'clock. Uh, this is the library's uh, web workshop, Introduction to PubMed. Um, one thing I want to recommend is uh, you listen to me and you watch part of the time, but have another window or tab open and follow along and do stuff. Uh, I am recording this. I hope to get an okay uh, recording and post it, and uh, you should be able to review it. I don't, can't give you 100% guarantee on that because sometimes they don't come out so well. But um, but um, anyway, that's what I recommend. Um, so um, let's talk first, what is PubMed? Here's our uh, library page that I wrote up. Uh, basically, the National Library of Medicine has a database to help people find research. In, uh, and I've got it listed here, medicine, but other health sciences um, and basic science. A wide range, it's a huge database. Um, the National Library of Medicine's database is actually called Medline. Uh, it goes way back. Um, they give it, they make it available to different uh, commercial interests, uh, which then present it you know, in different uh, ways. So we also have Medline through the Web of Science interface, and you might want to play with that. Some people don't like PubMed. Uh, if you want to try Medline instead, uh, I'm going to show you, take a quick look at show how to find it. But anyway, PubMed is the free public interface. It's free. It's going to be there after you graduate. Um, occasionally, they stop adding records, like when the government shuts down. But um, basically, it's there, it's growing, it's free. It has abstracts and um, to help you find, identify general articles. It doesn't, always, it doesn't actually have any full text other than the abstracts. Um, but as you may see here, uh, attached to it, and easily, it's easy to get to, there's something called PubMed Central that's full text. And about a third of the recent PubMed records linked free full text articles. So that's cool. And I think that'll go up over the years. Uh, but also, it'll link to um, full text in other ways. And we have it set up so it'll link to our subscribed full text. Uh, I will talk about the limitations of that. Um, so, anyway, that's PubMed. Um, I hope that's straightforward enough. Let's look at it and look at what it can do for you, which I guess is a better way to think about it uh, in a lot of ways. Okay, so um, I kind of described to you Medline, um, which is about the same thing. Oh, let me go back and just one other thing. PubMed does include Medline, but it includes about, um, you know, about 10% more stuff more records, and uh, it tends to be, well, for one thing, things go into PubMed before they're cataloged to go into um, a Medline, so PubMed is quicker. Oops, didn't mean to go there. PubMed is quicker, so uh, we're back at the end of the year, but I think once we start seeing 2016 records, we'll see a lot more um, PubMed, stuff in PubMed first, and then only after a month or two or whatever, it'll get into Medline as the librarians at the National Library of Medicine catalog stuff and do complete records in Medline. So that's one way. Uh, PubMed also includes some other things like uh, journals and articles uh, in journals that Medline doesn't index. Yeah, I believe it also includes some electronic books. Um, and I'm probably not covering everything. I think it also includes some foreign stuff that doesn't get into Medline because it's not on Medline's, you know, this it's not on Medline's list of journals. So, um, small difference. Okay, so uh, how would you access uh, PubMed? Uh, a lot of you all already probably know this. Uh, the library guides, probably about 10 of them in the health sciences all have links to PubMed somewhere on them. Uh, PubMed is actually just available in a regular Google search, you know, so, um, and you probably often when you're doing Google searches will see PubMed records. So there I got to it. Um, 
but I recommend you not do it this way. Um, it will not link to our full text as well, and that'll especially be true off campus. What I'm going to show you in a second, uh, it will, um, when you're off campus, it will ask you to log in just like our regular databases. And then when you click on the buttons to go to the full text, a lot of times it'll work because a lot of times we'll have full text. Okay, so this is um, the free version. Now, the easiest way for me is I go to all article databases and it's at the bottom of the alphabetical P list. A lot of times I go to health and medicine, nursing, exercise science, communication sciences and disorders, nutrition, you know, so a lot of these will have um, uh, PubMed on it. So I think I probably usually just go there. And here's PubMed. There's my picture <laughs> and my contact information is there if you need it. So here's PubMed. And if you look, this is a bit uh, longer, a little more uh, to it than this web address right here. So um, anyway, uh, this isn't terrible. And this is what you'll have after you graduate. But this is what you can use now. Um, it'll give you more full text again. Oops, and I've got filters on here. Let me clear that before I go any further. So uh, let me also back up a minute. Um, well, I mentioned Medline, so let me show you that. Medline's going to be under M, but on a lot of these health and medicine, again, there's Medline, and it looks like this. And if you've used Web of Science at all, it looks like Web of Science. But right here it says Medline instead of Web of Science. I think that's all I'm going to say about Medline today. Uh, let me, well, almost, actually, I want to tell you App Search does include Medline. It includes that version of Medline, um, so not PubMed. But when you do search, you'll see some of the results in Medline. Also, some of the results you'll see in other databases like CINAHL, Sports Discus, you know, whatever. Uh, Science Direct may also be in Medline too, but it's only telling you one of the databases it's coming from when you get a long list of results here. So that's another way. Uh, by the way, I also like Google Scholar, and uh, it will cover a lot of the same stuff as PubMed. But, um, but anyway, I, another reason I want, I'm really promoting PubMed is, you know, I like everybody in the college sciences. Even if it's not their main thing they search, I'd like them to be comfortable with it. So again, it's going to be there after you graduate. A lot of the people you work with in your careers, you know, and in school will be using PubMed. Um, but anyway, here we are in PubMed. Um, and uh, this, this first half of the um, broadcast, I just want to uh, do some simple searching. I've showed you how, what it, talked about what it was, talked about how to get there. Uh, you can see PubMed hit their 25th million citation last uh, this last year, which is pretty cool. So it is big. Uh, let's just do, I'm going to do a search on, um, let's see. Um, I had a friend who um, had something called frozen shoulder, and I believe it's also called by some other names like encapsulated, uh, oh, I forget capsulitis, uh, and it's also known as uh, bursitis, as we'll see. Uh, PubMed will prompt you with uh, a lot of choices. Let's just do frozen shoulder and see what happens. And um, one thing PubMed is, um, one thing usually when you start PubMed, it's going to go to most recent. And a lot of times when I'm doing a, you know, my beginning search and I've got 1,200 results, I really want relevance ranking, which is what you're used to in almost every other database you use. One exception is Web of Science. And if I have any chemists out there, SciFinder Scholar, those are the only two that uh, I know of that don't default to relevance. So this is a good thing to change to right away, but you might want to do most recent or some of these other choices at times. Uh, another thing I want to warn you about is PubMed is not just looking for all its articles in its database that have frozen shoulder, have those words. One thing it does, uh, oh, you know what I did? I did frozen, well, I 
well, that's not quite exactly what I wanted. Well, let me go ahead and uh, I'll come back to the point I'm trying to make that I've fouled up. Uh, one thing I do a lot, and you'll do in the health sciences, is limit to just the last few years. So you, uh, this one I punch a lot. Sometimes I'll pick a custom range. So let's do that. You've got some limiters here on the left side. I wouldn't use these usually. One thing I do a lot, especially early on and at the end when I'm doing searches, is review. And I'll show you later how to do to narrow that down a little more. Uh, a lot of times, you know, there might be hundreds of articles on my topic I'm interested in. And I just kind of to get started, uh, maybe to do some of my work for me, I want to get a review or better a systematic review. So those are a couple I use a lot. Oh, here it finally popped up, or maybe I just missed it before. Um, PubMed is not just looking for all the articles in the database that have the, the terms frozen, frozen shoulder. It recognizes that term uh, frozen shoulder and it maps it to this thing called MESH, medical subject headings, bursitis. So it's bringing up all the articles that have frozen and shoulder, but it's also uh, bringing up all the articles that have bursitis. Um, as you can see here. So it's doing a bit extra. Uh, and you can see also it's put in since I added, uh, I limited to just reviews and to the most recent time period, it's added these things down here. So, so anyway, let me undo those. Uh, let me clear those or I can also uh, clear everything over here. Let me do clear and then clear. And then let me just show you. I mean, you can use PubMed without thinking about this much or ever doing this, but it's kind of good to know what's going on a little better. So um, I tell you what, let me back up and we've got a search with no limits and we've got about 5,900 results. So let me go back and take out the things about bursitis. And now all I have, all this searching on our frozen and shoulder. So now let me do the search again, and you can see a lot fewer, only 11, 1200 about. So that's one of the things that's going on. Another thing I would typically do if I was searching for a phrase like frozen shoulders is I would put it, most of my searches in most databases, I would put in quotation marks. So I'm only bringing up documents, articles that have that phrase in that order and not frozen in one part of the article, the abstract and shoulder and another part of the title maybe. So, um, so anyway, let's hit search on that one. And that's even smaller number. But again, remember, it's not doing all that stuff down here. It's not looking for bursitis. So that's something important to remember. And uh, one thing that's also kind of interesting is it's kind of mapping usage of this term uh, through the years. Um, this might be back to 1950, whatever the start is. Okay, back to 1969. Um, sometimes you'll see some good stuff over here, like articles that are on the same topic, and it'll kind of help you. So there are a lot of little extra stuff. And really important, again, are the five years and, and the article types over here. Um, let's see, any questions? I don't see any questions. Um, Let's uh, take a look at, we've kind of looked all over the page now. Um, let's see, you can, um, one thing you could do at this point is email to yourself. I emailed some results to myself this morning and it, they took about two or three minutes to get there. So that was pretty nice. Also go to the citation manager, although using PubMed is a little funny with the citation manager. And if anybody wants to learn more about citation managers, uh, Zotero EndNote, I can even do in Mendeley, uh, contact me about that. Uh, so I think I won't do that. Uh, filters, if you've limited to five years or some things like that, oh, that's a nuisance. Uh-oh, I lost it. Let's see if I can go back. Um, let's just look. Um, one thing, uh, PubMed is searching uh, titles, uh, abstracts like this, and keywords and mesh terms, which are the uh, subject headings that librarians have assigned to it. So that's all that they're searching. They're not searching full text of the article. Uh, so anyway, here is one, um, one article. Uh, it's got a lot of information. Um, it's 
up here. You can see for the citation, it's got the authors. I can look up more. Um, let's see. Um, we'll look further at that, but these are all the topics it's on. Here's the abstract. Uh, probably the most important thing to you is full text. And I forget why we have two buttons, but anyway, I recommend you click on uh, the Find That ASU button. Uh, there are times where you'll see free full text button right here, which should work too. But let's just click this. Remember, Find That ASU does not mean you're going to get to full text. It means this button is going to look for full text uh, using a certain technology. And sometimes you're out of luck. Uh, this is once the search to see if we have a paper access to the journal, but we really don't have 2015 journals coming in paper anymore. So if this was a 1980 article, I would think I would go ahead and search our catalog to see if we had it, if I had the patience. Let me also just recommend if you, if this, you haven't gotten full text here, and uh, I would search to see if it's free on the web, usually using the article title, but the DOI we just saw in the previous place right here also works for searches and you can use that in our app search you can use it in Google Scholar which is what I usually use but we do have a system to get full text from other libraries if it's not free and we don't have a subscription so um, and I don't think I want to talk about that right now but if you want to ask questions later uh, that would be good so I'm going to close that because that looks like that's a dead end uh, that does happen sometimes um, let's just click on this one and see if it'll give us free full text. Yeah, it wants us to sign in, so we're out of luck on that one at least. By the way, the Iliad requests are taking about 24 hours right now, so that's a pretty good deal if you've got a little better time. Um, let's just try another one. Uh, let's go ahead and click on review, and um, let's look at this one. This is good uh, because here's the free PMC that is PubMed Central article. So we could click right here, I believe. Uh, no, I guess I have to click here because see here's the button that says free full text. I think this button would lead to it. And I don't know what this is, but it looks like it would work too. But here's probably the most first one I would push in here. Here is a full text article. You can view it as a PDF or in several other formats. So that's pretty cool. And again, about they're saying about a third of the current articles going into PubMed are, are going to be in here, uh, sometimes with a delay. But I think um, uh, you'll, you'll get a lot of full text that way. So uh, I think that's all I wanted to show you in the first half of this uh, workshop. Uh, kind of simple ways to um, some of the little things uh, review five years custom range make sure you you sort by relevance uh, or at least pay attention to that uh, is be aware that there's extra stuff happening here and they'll find more articles for you than you're telling to so be aware of that um, all right, I'm going to stop for just a minute and um, restart in just a moment. But if there are any questions, let me know. Oh, you know, actually, I hope you weren't intending to take a break for a minute. But um, one other thing I might as well tell you right now is uh, you can set up an account in PubMed. I don't recommend people set up a lot of accounts in a different places, but um, PubMed is something, again, you're going to be using your whole life. You might want to go ahead and set up an account. You can save searches. One thing, uh, you know, I get alerts every week or uh, so uh, whenever anybody Appalachian you know, publishes something. So, you know, there are advantages. You can save stuff in there. Uh, so I guess that's all I want to say. So, again, I'm going to take a break for just a minute. Excuse me. Okay, I believe we'll go ahead and start with part two. Uh, I promised uh, advanced PubMed, but uh, these things aren't going to be 
uh, terribly advanced. Um, let's see. Um, I don't think we close a few things. I guess I'm still getting ready. Um, yeah, let's open up PubMed again from uh, start. And let's go to nursing this time. And uh, here's PubMed. And um, by the way, there is a PubMed mobile. I haven't really been using it. Let's click on that. It looks really attractive. Um, let's do eating disorders this time. And again, a lot of times on typical search, I would put that in quotation marks, but in PubMed, it kind of makes sense to let PubMed do its work. Just like in regular PubMed, um, you might want to look at, most of the time you're going to want to put it on relevance. Uh, one thing that I kind of don't like is this breakdown. Um, uh, you might want to use the five-year thing just as in the other one, but I'm not totally satisfied with this breakdown, but you might not care. I think what I would recommend is if you're using a phone, I'd probably use this one. Uh, by the way, this is set up, so it will get full text from the library subscription, so that is good. Uh, I would probably on my tablet keep using the uh, the regular version and use this on a phone. So that's kind of my thinking on that. But uh, it is there. Um, another thing I want to show you is uh, let's look at uh, there's a lot of help stuff over here that I'm not going to show you. Let's look at clinical queries. And uh, let me just go back to frozen shoulder for a minute. And again, it's prompting me with a lot of possibilities, but I think I'll just go with that. And uh, one thing that's nice uh, here, I've already been talking to you uh, about clicking on the left column to get reviews, but a lot of times in the health sciences, you want systematic reviews or meta-analyses or things like that, evidence-based products. This middle column will bring that up for you, and you can see it's shown uh, the first of uh, 76, and we can go here and see all. And uh, this is a little bit interesting, uh, at least to a librarian. Uh, oh, not that again. Let's see if it lets me through. It's talking about the search strategy it uses, and here are all the other ter all the terms it's looking for in order to uh, to find um, systematic reviews for me. Uh, it's kind of a lot. Uh, it's pretty complicated. But anyway, you don't really have to know that. So um, you could just, you know, click here and and there you go. I don't know why it's showing uh, 29. Oh, it said 76 before, but I've got limits to five years. And let me undo that. That's another way to clear. So these are all the 76 that we saw on the last page uh, from the last five years. So let me see if I can back up. Yeah, see, here are the 76, the 76 I'm talking to. Now, this column, uh, I'm not going to talk about the right since I don't know anything about genetics, but the column on the right is if you want primary studies, um, and you can pick them on any of these five um, categories, but a lot of times uh, you're interested in some kind of therapy, treatment, intervention uh, on your topic, say frolic and shoulder, and it gives you two choices. They'll give you a broad set of results, see this is a pretty big set of results that uh, is going to have almost everything that might be of interest to you, but you might have a, a good number of things that aren't of interest. So, Or you can switch to narrow, much smaller set in this case. I'm not sure the difference will always be this big. And in this case, it might miss some things that are relevant to you, but it's not going to have as a big a percentage of things that aren't useful to you. That is, there are articles on therapy for frozen shoulder. And the things that uh, I won't click on at this time, but the things it's uh, filtering on that is searching for in the articles is, you know, whether it has words like randomized controls trial, clinical trials, and, and a lot of, you know, a lot of terms it uses to pick out which articles in the huge PubMed database are going to fit this. So this is pretty nice. We could look at the 192 and, um, so we've got limited to the last five years. So again, we've got 58 come up here. So that's, you know, that's not a bad way to start. Let me just start over a search and I can just click on the PubMed button. 
And uh, let me show you another way to search. And a lot of times when I'm just getting started, this is useful. Uh, and I clicked again, I clicked here on the mesh database. And this time, instead of going right in and searching on articles, I'm going to search on terminology first. That's what the mesh database is. The mesh database is a database of words and phrases. So let's switch over to eating disorders. It's a good example. And OK, so I've typed it in. Again, I didn't put it in quotation marks the way I probably would have. Uh, not really interested necessarily in small children, or infancy and early childhood. Let's use this one. And I get something like this. One thing that's important here is it maps the term eating disorders. Um, and it's got broader terms and narrower terms. And it, unless I tell it not to, uh, PubMed is going to search on eating disorders, but also things that are uh, cataloged as being on these topics, anorexia, nervosa, you know, bulimia, nervosa. One thing I could do is instead change my search and say, oh, I really meant anorexia, nervosa. I could widen to mental disorders. Um, one thing I like to do uh, is click this because this is going to bring up articles where eating disorders is considered to be a main topic not a not quite main you know topic um, and this this cuts down your results somewhat you know get articles that are even more focused on eating disorders but everything that's going to come up in my search would be on eating disorders even if I didn't click this so that's a pretty small difference um, you can click on stuff um, you know if you want to know what this means in this case, um, you know, I can click on subheadings and look up classification. So um, this is a little history. This trying to describe what eating disorders means and you know, a little history of the term in the database. Uh, one thing I might be interested in is uh, prevention and control. Uh, if you're interested in therapy, just be aware there's therapy, diet therapy, drug therapy, I think probably radiation. Uh, probably some other things uh, that might be, you know, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, trends, a lot of times I'll see trends, epidemiology, etiology, uh, you know, articles that are relevant on this topic for nursing. So, uh, so you, you, the, any number of choices. Okay, but anyway, you don't have to click any of these, but I clicked on this one and I'm going to click add to the search builder and it's going to do eating disorders slash prevention and control. And actually, it should have done, let me undo that. That's a little malfunction because it's supposed to, it's supposed to say major. And somehow, it, even though I had the, the box clicked, it said mesh. And again, major is a little stronger than mesh. Okay, so I've added in there. I could add more stuff, but let's search PubMed. And I've still got limited to five years, but these are the articles in the last five years that have been uh, found by librarians to be on eating disorders and prevention and control. So, uh, and this won't pick up, uh, this might not pick up everything, like if something had just been published uh, and it's gone in PubMed, but the Medline, it hasn't been cataloged in Medline, it won't have these attached to it, and it would miss it. There are probably some other ways you could miss it. It's a pretty good idea when you're doing a comprehensive search to use both the, the mesh headings and natural language. Uh, that's if you're trying to find everything. Um, and you can see right here in the search details, it's only searching on mesh right now, and it's not searching on the natural language terms. So it's a little different from what we were doing before. Not necessarily better. I do find sometimes when I'm starting on a confusing topic, this is a good way to start. And again, maybe reviews. Well, let's just click there again. All right. So that only leaves 22. Uh, so anyway, mesh headings. Um, you can usually find mesh over here. If you've already done a mesh search, there it is. If you're just starting, uh, you can find it down in the list. I hope that makes sense. Another thing that's a little advanced is the advanced search. And here you can see, I've been doing some searches earlier, I guess, uh, 
there are all these uh, searches, and I could go back uh, to, say, eating disorders. Um, I forget what's the difference among these, probably the filter to the last few years and all, something like that. But you can see, you know, I did a search, uh, eating disorders prevention, where I just used the natural language and I clicked on some buttons. So anyway, thing, one thing I could do, this kind of didn't make much sense, but I could combine a search on eating disorders with a search on frozen shoulder just real easily by going bam, bam. And I'm sure if I did this search, you know, I'd get zero. So I tell you what, I'm going to just start over and PubMed Home. And so again, I went here um, to do the mesh searching. Oh, another thing I wanted to do, um, let me see if I can back up uh, a, a little bit. Let me just go back to eating disorders. Uh, okay, now see, there's the mesh. Now let's... Uh, Let's just let's search that in PubMed. And another thing that's going on, again, eating disorders is going to be recognized as a mesh term. And so it's going to do eating disorders mesh and everything more narrow than that, like so bulimia and anorexia and the, the female athlete triad, everything we saw a few minutes ago. There are more choices, choices on the left side. Uh, so let's take a good look. Uh, maybe I want to not have reviews. I want uh, systematic reviews um, and maybe a few other choices. Um, let's go ahead and put in randomized control trial. Um, Meta-analysis. Let's see, is there something like evidence summary or guideline? Yeah, guideline. So now I've got more choices to choose from. Now I put them in the list, but I still haven't clicked them. And at any time I could click clinical trial and randomized control trial. By the way, and these are additives. So when I put both of these, it's not the intersection of these sets. It doesn't have to have both of them. It can have either of them. Let's clear those. And now on the other hand, I don't want the primary articles. I want the, the systematic reviews and I click on meta-analysis guideline. Um, you know, if you come in and do it in uh, the clinical queries, it'll kind of grab all those for you and you don't have to click the buttons, but there is a lot of power over here. Um, custom range is cool. Let me clear these. Um, I was searching earlier today just on articles published in 2015, at least nominally. Show additional filters. There are a lot of uh, choices here. Ages, sex, uh, journal categories. Let's just click them all and look at everything. Okay, so, and there's more power under advanced search, so maybe we'll take another look at that. Uh, by the way, uh, this is free full text and full text and all, but you never know, a lot of these things will link to our library's full text. So you might not want to exclude, uh, you know, and just do full text or free full text because, um, uh, unless you're frustrated, <laughs> because it'll limit a lot of full text you might have got. But let's just say uh, eating disorders, uh, maybe we're just, uh, we can add more things here. Let's say we're really interested in 13 to 18, or maybe we're interested in what maybe could be considered college age. And so let's add some categories. And it's also good because it's hard to figure out what to do for the aged and teenagers because there are several different words that can be used. But we could come in and just click this one. I, I kind of hesitate to do that too quickly. Um, we can add languages. I don't know that you want to do that. Maybe we want to look at male eating disorders. Uh, another thing that's really important probably is uh, maybe uh, some of y'all are nursing students. It's not a bad idea, just like in CINAHL, to sometimes limit to just the nursing journals. One thing we could do is add the word nursing here and kind of simulate that. But this limits to just nursing journals. Uh, and this is interesting. I, don't, I never use this, but just you could just limit to Medline journals. But um, so anyway, that's what's there on the left. Let's take a look at the advanced search for a minute. Um, um, one thing, there are a lot of things you can do here. One thing I do is I have an a, a affiliation search on, I guess, Appalachian State. Um, 
thought I searched on the zip code too, but I don't see address on here, but there's a lot of things for authors and dates, uh, subject headings, um, you know, the journal name, uh, just all kinds of stuff. Um, but anyway, affiliation, let me just show you uh, one thing I do. Let's see if I can spell it. And if you'll use show index list, it'll show you all these things, Appalachian, let me keep adding. And then I think I have to refresh index. And uh, most of the stuff is under you know, Appalachian State University, but if you look, there are some other things. Uh, I don't know what all that stuff is. Those are people's uh, faculty names, some of them, but you know, different programs at Appalachian State. So if we clicked here, you know, we can search just what's on um, uh, uh, for articles uh, from faculty from researchers affiliated with Appalachian State. And again, I've uh, have a uh, I've logged in to my account um, here at PubMed. And I've saved that search and arranged for it to send them to me. You know, like I forget if it's every week or every time. But PubMed adds stuff, and there's a few for Appalachian State. So that's cool. And of course, you can do more than one at a time. Uh, you can add a lot of fields and search along to, at the same time. So this is pretty powerful. Uh, I think I've almost used up my second 20 minutes. There's a lot here. I think this is a little confusing, but again, you the intent for all this is to kind of save your work, but also sometimes maybe you've searched on eating disorders and you realize you want to say, combine it with something else. I noticed there's an article on the five factors personality. You know, maybe you want to go, you've done a search on five factors and you want to combine that and that. And this makes it really easy to do. You just combine, you know, number 42 with number, you know, 14 or whatever, and you've got a whole new search. Uh, let's see, was there anything else I wanted to tell you? Um, there are topic-specific queries. I believe uh, some of them just go to the information pages. Uh, it seems like in the past I've seen them uh, lose the stuff that takes you to full text, but this looks like some of y'all might have some people that are in health services research and the healthcare management department. So you could search here and still get links to full text. I don't use these much, but, um, but uh, they look interesting, you know, AIDS, bioethics, and so on. Um, so, um, okay. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, if you want to, um, to contact me, I'm on, you know, you just sell me on that page. Sometimes I take, a lot of times I take my photo down, but here's my contact information. Um, so uh, let me know if you have questions. Uh, I guess that's all I want to say. Uh, I'm a pretty big PubMed fan. I'd like to see everybody in the College of Health Sciences uh, use PubMed uh, enough so they're pretty comfortable with it um, for when they leave school and, and they're maybe more dependent on it. Um, all right, good luck. Uh, if there are no questions, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close out. And um, maybe I'll see you next uh, workshop or out in the real world.